Melissa, how are you? Dan S. Bram. Hey, there's Bob. I'm going to hand some stuff out at the end of it. Let me just, before we get started, just kind of tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a brief statement. I'm going to read a statement from my client. I've got copies of all the text messages. And um, I have them on disk for people who have them. I think I probably did not bring enough. Um, and I have a, a copy of the statement uh, that I want to um, hand out as well. I'm going to turn off my phone, or at least turn it on stun. And I'll begin in a second here. Yeah, I know. This is Greg Stanton's fault. He could have taken care of this. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. All right, how much is this? Is this good enough, folks? Okay. All right. I appreciate you coming here today. I'm here to talk on behalf of a woman who was taken advantage of by one of the most powerful men sitting in the state senate, Steve Montenegro. This was a woman who was trying to put her life back together. She ended up with a, a great job as a staffer in the Senate. In her effort to do her job, she was communicating with Senator Steve Montenegro, who, as you will see when we read the statement from my client, had started to make the affair not professional and very personal. You will see that he was grooming her for a sexual relationship in the way that he was texting her and communicating with her. So here was a young woman who was trying to get her life back together again, and Senator Montenegro was taking advantage of her. She has been struggling over the last couple of weeks with this whole issue. It was not her intent to make this public. She was victimized by an ex-boyfriend who, without her knowledge, her authority and consent went upon her computer and took multiple images and text messages between herself and Senator Montenegro and began to shop them around in the media. The attention has not died down and now today we see Senator Montenegro basically lying in the press about the affair calling this tabloid trash a young woman and saying that he never solicited anything. And with that, I will read the statement from my client. It reads as follows. My name is Stephanie Holford. I was employed by the Arizona Senate as the digital media coordinator for the GOP. I was first employed there in 2017. I enjoyed the work that I did in that position. I was very happy working for Wendy Bart Baldo and Mike Phillipson. I feel very badly that my involvement in this matter has let them down. I feel very badly that my involvement in this matter has let my coworkers down. And I thank them all for being so supportive after this matter has become public. I first came to know Senator Steve Montenegro in my position as the digital media coordinator. We often communicated via text messages. At first, the messages were professional and related to the work that I was doing for him as a state senator. In a very short period of time, Senator Montenegro began sharing personal information about his likes and dislikes for music, food, exercise, and so forth. And I responded in kind. Many of these texting conversations occurred outside the normal work hours. I asked Senator Montenegro at one point if I should refer to him as Senator or Steve. He told me to call him Steve. Over the months, we began to flirt. I felt comfortable enough with the relationship that I began to send pictures of myself 
in various states of undress. Senator Montenegro asked me to send them on Snapchat instead. We engaged in sexual conversation about these pictures. These conversations were detailed and intimate. Because they were sent through Snapchat, I do not have copies of them. Eventually, the texting and snapping stopped. I was first contacted again by Senator Montenegro after Representative Trent Franks resigned from Congress amidst his own sexual scandal. Senator Montenegro wanted to make sure I was, quote, cool and not going to be talking about our texting, snapping relationship. I assured him I did not want this to go public. I was stunned to find out that an ex-boyfriend, Kent Lyons, snuck onto my computer and stole my private information and began to shop it around to the media. I am considering what legal actions I may have for his involvement in this matter. It was never my intent to make this affair public, but now that my name and image have been brought out in public, I am taking my accountability, I am taking accountability for my part in all of this. I apologize profusely for my involvement in this matter. I want to move on in my efforts to rebuild my life. And I ask that the media and others respect my need for privacy now. With that, I'm gonna read some of the material from the text messages, and you can see they're quite extensive. These are, this is the package of text messages that have gone on. Now, some of them don't have all of the, the conversation, like, for example, from Stephanie, but what you will be able to see from that is his responses to things, and you will find out these are, in its politest terms, not very senatorial at all. Some of the things that I've highlighted for you is, for example, on February 3rd of 2017, starting at 9.09 uh, in the evening, uh, he, has, he starts texting her about... Uh, you have so many cards on me now. Ha ha, that's awesome. He talks about running and exercise and food and what do you like. And uh, you can't see my goofy dance. The point of all this, what he's doing, is he's taking information and trying to find out how personal she's willing to be with him. He's grooming her for what he wants to get out of her. It's not just my opinion. You can see this as we go through this. Um, some of the other ones that we have in here, for example, here's one from February, 7, or February 15, 2017 at 11.29 p.m. And he's not texting her about matters related to the Senate, but how, you know, again, about music and exercise and so forth. Uh, one of the things he refers to her as, okay, have a good night, Stephanie. Okay, good night. Senator Montenegro, question mark, Steve, question mark, whichever is appropriate. Steve is good, no worries, he responds. And then he says, I'll Senator at the Capitol. The reason I point this out is this was her way of saying, hey, what way is this relationship going here? He had an opportunity as a state senator to say, it's Senator and Staffer, it's not Steve and Stephanie. There are others that go on like that. For example, on March 1st, 2017 at 11.08, he starts off at 9.20 a.m. Good morning, sunshine. She responds, good morning. You'll see other things in here. For example, he talks about in the Appropriations Committee, he has the worst chair. Uh, he talks about Dennis Welch. He talks about Yvonne uh, Winget Sanchez in here. So you can see all the comments. He talks about other senators and what he thinks about them. You've got it all here. Um, 
eventually what you will find out is when he gets to the point where he's you know she's starting to send pictures he's saying send them over on um, snapchat so that he knows that they'll disappear before I finish and turn turn this over to questions I want to make something abundantly clear today in the Washington Examiner Senator Montenegro said that this was an effort by Senator Deborah, uh, Senator Lesko to smear him. I want it abundantly clear that Senator Lesko had nothing to do with this. This was an act of revenge by an, uh, an ex-boyfriend who took this material. The Lesko campaign had nothing to do with this. I don't agree with Senator Lesko's uh, politics. I'm going to be clear about this. But it's, it's not fair that Senator Montenegro make this up and say that about Senator Lesko. Senator Montenegro is a moral toad. The reason we no longer have Trent Franks in Congress is because he was a moral toad. And I'm asking the citizens in Congressional District 8 if he does not resign from this race to not elect another moral toad. And with that, I stand available for questions. Probably not. This has been humiliating and embarrassing. Uh, this has been a difficult process. Uh, she was blessed to have great co-workers, good friends, great bosses. Uh, she did not want to give up this job. She's not listening to rules. Why did she? She's a, she's a young woman that is being paid attention to by a sitting state senator. Uh, and at the time, there weren't any quote unquote rules. But now, as this whole hashtag MeToo movement is getting afoot, uh, really, we need to be looking at the conduct of our state senators because they're the ones that had the, you know, he's the one that had the easy opportunity to say, I'm the senator, you're the staffer, when she asked him that question. He knew the rules. Not only did he know the rules, he knew he was married. And not only did he know he was married, he's a minister who preaches the Christian gospel who knows what this means about adultery. So, no, who knows the rules here is the senator who, when he was asked, should I call you Senator or Steve, should have said it's Senator. Yes? There are no legal bills. I'm, I, am de I am representing this, this, this poor woman uh, for free because nobody else is stepping up and, and getting her story out in the, in the correct way. And I'm not, this is not a condemnation of the media. This is a poor woman who's just beleaguered all of a sudden by this massive story that she didn't have, want any uh, part to be in. What happened was somebody contacted me. I was told that, the, that she was a whistleblower. When I first met with her, I realized this was not a whistleblower situation, that she had been the victim of somebody taking this, this information and then shopping it around. I have given her advice on what, what criminal charges could be brought. I've given her advice on what civil claims could be brought, um, and it's up to her at this point to do it. I, quite frankly, I think the state senate has an obligation uh, to take a look at what's happened here. And even though Senator Montenegro is no longer a member of the, of the state senate, they can take action and censure him uh, for what he's doing. And I don't know if they will do that or not. What, uh, what are your Yeah, you know, you can do all the training you want, uh, but unless there, there are consequences to it for somebody like a senator taking advantage of his position of power, uh, you know, then this is going to continue on. There will be other Montenegros and other shooters. So, no, the, the, it, it, it has a, this impact. Um, just training alone isn't going to do it. You've got to be finding men and women of moral courage that have the backbone to say, hey, I, I'm sorry, you misread my text messages, that's not the, the relationship. When you read these text messages, when I hand them out, you will see not once does he ever mention his wife in there or the fact that he's married. You know, th 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 how does that happen? Yes. Mr. Ryan, has a settlement been paid or are you aware of a settlement that has been paid uh, to any party involved in this issue or has there been a discussion of a settlement to Neither. prevent any of this from becoming public? No, there was no offer to keep this from coming, uh, uh, no offer of a settlement. No money was taken, no money was offered, nothing, zero, no. There wouldn't be a basis for it at this point. Was it requested? Someone, 
Well, nobody requested it. And then Melissa. Any questions someone approach her about a non-disclosure agreement or offer her money in order to be quiet? Not that I'm aware of. Tell me what civil and criminal penalties you are. Let's talk first about the criminal actions that might apply. Arizona has a revenge porn law. And uh, what that means is when somebody, t you know, that what you do in your own bedroom, you have the right to remain, right to keep private. That's not, that doesn't belong to anybody. If somebody who's an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend goes into your digital data and they grab, uh, they grab pictures, data, whatever they get, um, if they go out and take that out for any purpose, to, to intimidate, to humiliate, to extort, to bribe, whatever it is, the mere offering to show those pictures or that information is an act of revenge porn and it's chargeable under Title 13 as a felony. So that's that, to answer your question about what the criminal charges could be, that the, you know, for the person, that's what they're potentially facing if the police or the county decide to take it up. As for a civil cause of action, uh, this is what we call a false light invasion of privacy. They invaded her privacy, and now they're, they're painting her in a light that she, that's, that she never intended to be. So it's a false light invasion of privacy. This is, these are reputational damages, and uh, if, if she's going to pursue that, that's going to be through some other counsel. I don't, I'm not going to do it, uh, not because I don't want to, but I want to be completely clean in this. I want, I'm here to take care of Stephanie Holford and what she's gone through in this whole affair. Do you think the state Senate failed to protect her? Yes. Yes, this is. Uh, let, uh, let me elaborate on Bob. This is a problem. This is not limited to just one or two individuals in this, in in these two buildings here. This is a problem that's endemic, and there are a lot of women who get pressured. Sometimes it's overt, or sometimes it's very subtle, like what happened here. Hey, you're sweet. Hey, sunshine, how you doing? Oh, it's 11:30. I just got back from my run. I got to go take a shower. All of these things were intended to slowly but surely break her down. If you're, if you're going to break down a virtuous person, you don't just walk up and say, let's go to bed. It's a process. And that's what Senator Montenegro was doing, was engaging in a process. How would anybody in the state Senate know two adults are engaging in this consensual texting after hours, during hours? None of this existed. That's why we... Here, so how could, how it, it's not... You're right. You, that's how, how do they protect them? It starts with adopting real rules and enforcing the real rules. If you're caught as a state senator engaging in this kind of a relationship with, uh, after hours with a staffer, we will take action against you, ranging from censure to dismissal. Hey, let's give the House credit. They got they got their guy out, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. There are ways to deal with this. These two institutions, the House and the Senate, have complete control over the members of their House. They can expel them at any time, and it's not reviewable under the Constitution with the Supreme Court. Mr. Ryan, has the relationship, or at any time, did the relationship become physical? No. And yeah, how do you know that for sure? She told me no. So you never met outside of the Capitol on a personal? No. Not that I'm aware of. She says no. What there was is he, there were multiple pictures of her in various states of undress, very, various portions of her body that were sent back and forth, and there was sexual banter about what they wanted to do with each other. That Did is true. Did you ever send pictures of himself to her? No. Is that sexual banter in those documents? No. Why not? Because it was all on Snapchat, and the whole point of Snapchat is that it all disappears. I was uh, I was asked to meet her as a whistleblower. Uh, when I met with her, within a matter of seconds, uh, she told me I'm not willingly here. Uh, I don't know what happened. She was stunned. She was shocked. Uh, and what I found out right away was she was a victim of somebody stealing this information that she intended to keep private from her computer. Uh, and I directed. Uh, the individual who took that, I sent him a very clear-cut, clean, and direct email. You, you, took, you have taken this information from my client's computer without her knowledge, without her approval, without her consent. You do not have the right to keep it or have it. You must destroy it immediately. You have no right to show it to anybody or offer it to anybody. You have no right to even discuss it with anybody. And then he went around and shopped it off to different media. No, he is never. He, I, 
One thing I do know is something about conflicts of interest. After serving uh, nearly 11 years on various ethics committees with the State Bar of Arizona, something I'm very sensitive to, I did not obtain any kind of confidential information from him. We never signed a fee agreement. Uh, I, uh, when I interviewed, you know, I, I, I met him. I did. I spoke to him on the phone twice, and he brought her to my office. Does that, how does that not represent, how does that not represent a conflict? Just for, in layman's Because I, he's not my client. Just because you come to my office. If you came to my office and interviewed me, you're not my client. You're still who you are. You're a journalist. But he was the ex-Attorney General originally brought to the office. Yes. He was the person that said she was a whistleblower. Yes. Yes, I do know how he got access to her computer. Um, after they had broken up, uh, he had uh, come over to spend the night. And at approximately 2 o'clock in the morning, he logged on to her computer and began to access material that, that supposedly he was printing off of, of an airplane ticket or something like that. And he actually not only went and downloaded uh, information off of her computer, uh, but he reactivated accounts of hers. So he was obviously going back. For example, she got a, a message the following morning, uh, thanks for re, you know, uh, re, re, uh, activating your Twitter account or whatever it was that she had closed down. So, and we believe that it may have been on more than one occasion that that happened. Bob, that's not unusual for you. Yeah. Okay, so they're still friends, but they're broken up. She's not. No, she was. When she, I, the way I would say it is, when she came into my office, she was really unclear or unsure what was happening. I had never met her before. Uh, I was unclear what was happening. I was trying to figure. I'm same with you. I was trying to figure out what was happening. As soon as I realized what the story was, I realized this is what this was a victim of revenge porn. That she did not want this to be public. And the idea that I was somehow going to help her be another Sarah Beatty in the sense of being a whistleblower like we did with Tom Horn, that wasn't this case. She wanted it shut down. There are various members of the media that are here today that will tell you. Um, I did my best to, to, to deflect and to keep the matter confidential. It wasn't until, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I'm not blaming the media. The media's got to do its job, but it wasn't until uh, the Bram Resnick report on Channel 12 when it first became public that, all right, the text messages are out. And then yesterday, uh, the New Times went public with uh, her image uh, as well as her, her name. And I'm, I'm not happy that happened. So this wasn't about me trying to help her be a whistleblower. This was about me uh, trying to help her navigate through a very difficult time. And this morning when we looked at the Washington Examiner report with Montenegro for the first time, not talking to the local media and addressing these issues, uh, but basically saying this didn't happen, uh, I never asked her to send this, uh, basically everything, you know, he, basically everything he was saying about Stephanie Holford and his relationship with her was a lie. I, we, I have been, I have spent the last two weeks trying to keep this out of the media. I've spent the last two weeks trying not to let it go public. Uh, and so today, after the, her image is out, her name is out, the emails, some of the emails are out, uh, and Mr. Montenegro, in, in, in essence, throwing her under the bus, his, calcu his miscalculation, it was time where she said, I can't do this anymore, I want this over. So the idea, and I, the, the explanation is, Get the emails out, admit that it was you, admit what happened, and let Mr. Montenegro deal with it. I don't live in CD8. I don't care about uh, Mr. Montenegro personally. Uh, it's not my political statement. Uh, the fact that he decided to engage in this kind of an affair and take the hypocritical positions that he's taken, that's his issue now, not mine. How did she find out that her messages were stolen and what's her reaction when she found out? Uh, she was contacted by her ex-boyfriend. Uh, who told her I have them and, you know, we need to go public with these things. If the images were taken or sent through Snapchat, how did he pull them from the 
the, well, the, the computer is a Mac. It's an, I, it's, a, it's an Apple. So she's got an Apple phone and, an, and they, they sync. And so the, the image that he had was a single image. There were more than one. I have not viewed the images. I've asked not to view the images. I don't need to view the images. It's just sufficient to know that that's happened, that they were traded back, that she sent them on to him. But he didn't know they were on there. He, he, he was basically hunting around for everything he could find on her computer. Do you have any idea why? Yeah, he was upset that this was a person uh, that he had, had been in a romantic relationship with. Uh, had and he he probably had reason to believe or had some knowledge of this kind of a relationship between her and and Mr. Uh, Montenegro, and so he decided to go look for it. Let me ask you this. Uh, this is not I'll get back to you, Jeremy. I apologize. No. Uh, this is not a 17, 18, 19 year old girl. This is a 30 year old. What did she say? She, you're absolutely right. She said, I, I take responsibility. I admit it. I'm being accountable for it. She gave you a fairly uh, detailed description in her statement today about about what the nature of the relationship is. I'm not sure what else she should do. I mean, she's she's taken her responsibility. Now it's time for Mr. Montenegro to quit running from the media, and he can answer it. And it's not just me. And this is not just a political statement for me. You got Kathy Herod from CAP asking. You have uh, Governor, former Governor Jan Brewer asking. This isn't just my political statement. It's, a, it's the, the considered opinion of people on both sides of the aisle. This guy needs to go. So you mentioned that she would on Snapchat, she continued to send him pictures, I think you described as a various states of undress. Those were nude photos, to be clear? Yes. And he'd never told her not to send those? Not only did he not tell them to not send them, they would have, uh, they would have discussion back and forth about what they wanted to do with each other. Were you okay. asked for the photos? He didn't have to ask. They were sending him back and forth and having discussions about him. But he didn't send any new photos of himself? No. But the, the discussion they had was sexual? Yes. This, she told you this, though. Yes. I'm t I'm, everything I'm telling you, I am authorized to confirm to you. That, yes. What is she afraid of now? Would this make Can you, this is not a, well, you asked, what is she afraid of? She's not afraid of anything other than, you know what, it's, it's hugely embarrassing. This is a young woman who's trying to get her life back together. I have stood before the media many times. I'm not afraid of standing before you all. But here's the problem. Some poor little citizen who makes, an, who makes a decision, uh, and I'm not trying to downplay it in any way, but makes a decision like this, uh, it's hard to come out. She can't go in and even face her own friends, the people who have been texting her in the last few days saying, Stephanie, we love you and we support you. This is hugely embarrassing and difficult for her. That's what I said at the outset. This is a young woman who's very vulnerable. Uh, she's trying to get her life back in order. And for, for Steve Montenegro to take advantage of that is just disgusting. Mr. Ryan, do you groom the degree she was being groomed? You know what? People who are groomed don't understand that they're being groomed at the time it happens. That's why predators can get away with it for so long. Uh, and it's, it's, never, it's never a single event. It's usually a series of steps. And it's an inch a little bit and an inch a little bit, and that's what was going on here. When you read the when you read these emails or the text messages, you'll see that. Did you Yvonne and then you. You have a relationship with Senate President Yarbrough. I don't. You don't. No, I okay. know who he is. You've never represented him. I've never. Uh, well, no, that's not true. actually. You know what? Thank you. I represented uh, I represented Steve Yarbrough on a petition challenge. Along with, oh gosh, you're you're bringing me back yeah. a number of years. So my point there is, is there, I mean, is there space there for a conversation with him about how this was handled? If, according to Mike Phillipson, a member of the Senate brought to the Senate president's attention that there was an issue, and it appears as though no one leaned in to try to figure out what that issue was. We didn't hear about it until weeks later. Okay. What? What can be done there? What can the Senate it, it, do? All right. It starts with it starts with adopting a hard line rule. There are no uh, relationships between Senate and staff. Let me explain why that's important briefly. Because when a senator is having a relationship with staff members, it it unlevels the playing field for that staff member and it, it, and, and other staff members. So the one who's now at the attention, getting the attention and the affection from that one senator, is not playing fair to the other staffers. And so that's a huge problem, and that's why that kind of a rule needs to be adopted here. So number one, there ought to be a hard line rule. Number two, 
the Senate ought to take this issue up much in the same way that the House did. And that means to, to, to examine what Steve Montenegro did and, and to take action. Now, they can't expel him, but there's nothing that they can do. That there's no reason why they couldn't censure him if, if, if they felt that the, the evidence was appropriate. Uh, if the NCAA can go back and take away the 2013 national championship from Louisville after the fact, there's no reason why they couldn't censure uh, Steve Montenegro for his misconduct when he was in the Senate. And it sends a real clear-cut message about what they think in, in the Senate. Does your client have any expectations from her relationship with Senator Montenegro? In other words, does she think he was going to get his wife? Did she know he was married? Did she think this was going to turn physical at some point? What was her expectation? No, I don't think she had any expectation. I don't think there was a whole lot of thought going into it at the time. I don't think she, uh, I, I, although I think she was generally aware that he was married, their marriage and, the, and his wife never came up in their, their conversations or their texting. Uh, I don't think, that, no, there was no expectation of anything beyond like, uh, I'll be working for you if you go to Congress or something like that, no. I go back to this, Jeremy. You, you, if I'm in the same league as, as Republican Governor Jan Brewer, the same league as uh, Debbie Lesko, the same league as Kathy Herod, all saying the same thing. Is it really about me going after Montenegro for political gain? I'm not in his district. So it doesn't matter to me. And quite frankly, there are, what, 16 or 15 other candidates in the Republican Party for that district. They don't have to elect this one. They've got other candidates they can look at that would be way better than this. They don't need to elect another uh, sexual, you know, uh, just a sexual harasser to the to the Congress. We don't need that anymore. Would you characterize him as a predator? I would, yes. In this in this context, when he is taking advantage of a young, vulnerable woman, and I'm not downplaying her role. She's taking her accountability. But when he's you know going after and and, and talking about all the the sexual uh, innuendo and banter and everything else, as she's sending stuff back and forth, yes. What is next for her? She doesn't know. See, this is this was this was not in her contemplation that this would be her life. In her mind, she was going to finish out this this year as a, the digital media coordinator for the Senate. Uh, this has done a lot of damage. I mean, she's worried about what her family's going to think now. Uh, she has just been in the process of repairing her relationship there. I don't know what's going to happen for her. She was. Th this is not something that. That's the other thing. This is not anything that this young woman wanted, and it was my efforts to try and help her keep it under wraps. Uh, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, that, that just wasn't the case. Did Senator Montenegro ever introduce proposition of a physical sexual type of issue? Not that I'm aware of. Have you tried reaching out to Montenegro? I have no reason to reach out to Montenegro. Does he face any liability? I don't know. That's a great question. I haven't examined that. Nothing leaves to mind? Nothing leaves to my mind, no. Wait, uh, you first and then you. Okay. As tawdry as this whole thing is, bottom line is you've got two consensual adults. And I know you've talked about her being vulnerable, but you know, what responsibility does she have to just say, cut it out? We, we they both have that responsibility. And it goes back, but that misses, that misses the point. The point is a state senator showing special attention, affection, and things like that. Wanted, hey, next time you come to Memphis with me, you know, that kind of stuff is inappropriate because it's not fair to the other people that she's also employed with. That's the problem. And the criminal action against the ex-boyfriend, is that something that... That she's considering what to report or whether she'll report it. I ha I'm not a prosecutor. I can't help press charges. Bram, you, a different kind of question? Yes. Yes. How did she get that job? She, she got the job by putting down on her uh, form that she had been convicted of a DUI and that she was a felon. Uh, she, had ser she had gone to U of A uh, after she was released from prison, and she was a 4.0 student at U of A. She had applied for a student internship here and was quite successful. 
and uh, towards the end of that was invited to apply for this position. She's really a very bright and talented person in spite of what happened. I, I can't go into all the prior difficulties, but let me address something, and I, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm really kind of ticked about, the Phoenix New Times story. The one thing I can say about Stephanie is she made her mistake. She had the DUI. She went through the trial. She was convicted of the felony, but she served her time. She paid the price that the state asked of her. Uh, she did what she was supposed to do, and now she was just trying to get her life back together. Mr. Montenegro was taking advantage of somebody who he, he was checking and looking and pushing. You'll see from these text messages trying to find out about her because he was moving in that direction. He wanted, he wanted something more than just help me with, mess, with my message here. You know what? It basically fizzled out. I, I, there's no other statement other than maybe they got too busy. I don't know, but it just you'll see from this. It basically fizzled out. Uh, there was a time after Trent Franks resigned that uh, he contacted her and basically said, hey, we're, we're cool, right? And she said, I have, I have no desire to do anything with this. Uh, I'm not going public with this at all. And that was, those were my instructions to my client. It's been the series of events over the last few days, including Mr. Montenegro's own decisions and miscalculations in this matter that led me to finally say, all right, we're going down. Now, logistically speaking, are these text messages from her phone or yes. from her iMac? Or? It's, well, oh, a, a good question. What happened is the, the, the messages were also synced to her computer. She thought she had erased them from her phone, but they're on the computer, and these are, the, these are images from her computer. How long were they doing these text messages? From approximately uh, February, early February of last year until the last one was just uh, a couple months ago. This is a Fox 10 News Alert.